In this program, we're going to be teaching you about lucid dreaming and what it is and also the best practices for it, a variety of techniques and why we think that this is a very special state of consciousness that you can use to improve your daily lives and also your nightlife. So just to begin, uh, what is lucid dreaming? Let's make sure that we're all talking the same language. A lucid dream is not just a very vivid dream or a well-remembered dream. A lucid dream is a dream in which you know you are dreaming while you're still in the dream. So um, a lot of people actually experience this spontaneously. Uh, recent polls put it almost about uh, half the population at some point in their lives will experience a lucid dream. But it's so sporadic that uh, there's not really much you do with it. So hopefully during this program you're going to find out a, a lot about the uses of lucid dreaming and experience that for yourself uh, so that it forms part of your daily life uh, practice, building lucidity in the day and night and building up a strong meditative practice where you start to build a relationship with your dream consciousness. So... Um, it's scientifically proven, uh, especially in the West uh, since the 70s. There have been uh, numerous studies now conducted to show that lucid dreaming is a special state of consciousness. It's a hybrid state, somewhere between waking and, uh, and uh, regular dreaming. So it's a hybrid state, um, but very much proven in the lab. It's not woo-woo or you know some sort of esoteric thing. It's, it's uh, a really rarefied state. Which, uh, which we can use to do all kinds of things. So the uh, objectives of this workshop are to teach you how to actively uh, engage and interact with your dreams, uh, improving your dream recall from the first instance. So um, sometimes we get questions like, uh, well, how do I lucid dream when I can't, uh, when I don't dream? Well, um, the vast majority of the population uh, dreams about five or six times a night. Uh, so just because you don't remember your dream doesn't mean you don't have them. So we will be building tools to help you to increase the frequency of uh, remembering dreams and so that you get more and more dream content so that you can then start to target uh, these particular dreams, noticing your own patterns and your own uh, your own flow into the dream state so that then you can uh, use these states creatively. We're going to be playing around with gaining control uh, of the dream state, not necessarily trying to force the dream into doing anything that it doesn't want to do. Uh, that's really uh, difficult and it doesn't really happen. And what we're going to be talking about more is influencing your action within the dream state. So you don't create everything in the dream um, that, that's being filled in by the dream generator. And what you can be is a director of the dream scene. So you become lucid, you become conscious in the dream, you know you're dreaming while you're in there. What is it that you would like to do? What would you like to explore? What questions would you like to ask? Um, how would you build a relationship with the dream state from that perspective rather than having to fill in the details? So if you want to be on a beach, absolutely you can be on the beach, but you don't have to think of every grain of sand, the motion of the surf, the birds and flying overhead and the sounds they're making and so on. That's all given to you. So you become a director and you control your own action within the dream state. What we're also going to be controlling is our access into the dream. So slowing down the process of sleeping because we're very used to going to sleep uh, together with our bodies. So what we're going to be doing is allowing our minds to remain awake and alert um, as our bodies fall asleep so that we can consciously enter the dream state uh, without uh, losing awareness. And that will allow you to be able to plan and uh, notice the features of uh, dreaming, noticing the, uh, the entry into, into dreaming, uh, which is accompanied by various uh, sensory phenomena. Um, and that will form the basis of, of some of the exercises. Um, what, what I've been talking about there, about the dream generator, means that you've got access to the, the, uh, this inner guidance, this, this um, subconscious self, which is always there trying to give you messages. It does it every single night, five or six times a night, as I've said, 
and is very, very patient. So sometimes some of you will, will have had recurring dreams, dreams with the same message, and it could even be a nightmare. Um, that's absolutely fine too. But the same message is trying to get through to you, and you've not been able to decode it and make sense of it. So the dream is very patiently just sending you the same information again and again, maybe in slightly different ways to try to get your attention and make you lucid uh, as to the message of the dream. But, you know, we, we tend to ignore our dreams, so we're not getting it and therefore it will repeat. Um, accessing this this inner guidance, I refer to this as the, the genie. Um, you're going to be going into the lamp with the genie. That's how I see lucid dreaming. And so you're going to be going into the realm of the genie. You can be a director in there. But bear in mind that the genie has its own agenda in there. It's got its uh, own way of creating worlds and getting messages to you. So now it's a matter of learning a new language in a way because it's a symbolic language rather than a spoken language. So it's about how do you develop that uh, discourse? How do you develop that dialogue uh, with the genie so that then you can co-create a new reality together. Um, we're going to be also very gently challenging our beliefs. So we have particular ways of perceiving the world and uh, navigating it and thinking that um, things are supposed to operate. Um, and in the dream, uh, what you tend to encounter are your beliefs uh, of how the world should be. So the dream is very good at holding a mirror up to you and showing you where you are now in your current level of development. And here we're going to just gently be probing some of those uh, beliefs and seeing if we can build a bit more flexibility and creativity in the way that you think so that we can start to open up the decision space a lot more so that you can become a little bit more flexible in uh, in the daytime as well as in the nighttime so that you see more solutions uh, during uh, your life experience. Um, and you can also use the dream very creatively for problem solving. So if you've got any questions that you want uh, answering to in daytime uh, situations, whether it's at work or relationship issues or whatever it is, uh, we know that we, we, we do this uh, anyway. Every culture has a, a way of uh, expressing the uh, sleep on it uh, phrase. And we know that the nighttime is incredibly creative at taking the problems of the daytime and building in new connections, new perspectives, so that when we wake up in the morning, we've got uh, more possibilities and more answers to our problems. Here, we're going to be uh, going in directly to, to do that sort of work so that we can um, build an interaction with the dream state so that we don't have to passively wait until the morning to be able to interact but we can do that on the approach to sleep and then in the dream so that when you get an answer, you can interact with it a little bit and feed it back in again and, and see if you can get some more uh, dialogue and perspective on that. And last but by no means least, uh, have fun with the state. You know, this is a very, very playful state. Uh, the subconscious is incredibly uh, playful as well and, and will probably poke fun at you if, you if you take yourself too seriously. You really are in a virtual reality where you can do whatever you want. It's an incredibly safe space. You are in your own mind and you can test a lot of things out. Um, I mean, we've had people do all kinds of things from obviously flying off into space, into the sun and breathing underwater and doing all kinds of weird and wonderful tricks. Um, but they've also tested things and rehearsed things in, in the dream state. Um, they might have had an issue with public speaking, for instance, and then they've just dreamt of being in an auditorium full of people and just given a presentation. So they've used it as a rehearsal exercise. You can do tons of things in the dream state. Uh, knowing that you're in this safe and protected environment where everything's permitted and the only limitation is your imagination. So uh, that's what we're going to be covering uh, during this program. We're going to be really uh, exploring many, many different techniques and then uh, towards the end really start building some uh, nighttime interruption techniques as well. So well, hopefully you'll start to uh, to build more lucidity in your day and the night and find that this adventure together is uh, very enjoyable. And so this leads us to the to the next point. Why do we want to dream uh, uh, lucidly? How do you use lucid dreaming? 
So, and we are, when we ask this question, maybe we, we look at the development of a lucid dreamer and see it from uh, uh, this perspective. Because when we, when we start lucid dreaming, usually, and this is what I strongly recommend, you, uh, usually we start playing in a lucid dream. This is the first stage of the lucid dream. You, you play in, in your dreams with what you get. So as a beginner, don't take it too seriously because there's a belief in our society that we have to suffer to, to develop. And this is actually not true. We can transform a lot of things through humor and through and things are often transformed uh, formed only because we look at them. So uh, to be playful and to start lucid dreaming with playing is, is a perfect start. When we lucid dream and we start the lucid dreaming, we tend to react in our daily habits. Well, this reflects us perfectly. When, when we see a bus in our lucid dream, where people queue because they want to buy a ticket, and as a beginner, we queue too and wait until we can buy a ticket for the bus. As an advanced lucid dreamer, you go through the wall of the bus and sit down because everything is your reality. We know that we cannot do this in this reality, but our attitude changes. We recognize the habit and we stay more open and we see more possible solutions in a situation. And this makes us more creative and actually we get more freedom in, in our actions. When we, and this is also the case when we start to work on problems. When you're a lucid dreamer and in your dream you get attacked by a person with a knife, you usually react with your standard uh, reactions which uh, how, how you would react in this reality. So you would bargain, you would run away, you would fight or die. These are the possibilities you have in this re uh, reality. As an advanced lucid dreamer, you could play with that. You can change the knife, you can uh, choose you have an iron body and they can stab the ni knife into you. Or you can freeze the time and think what you would do now with the attacker. Or there are tons and hundreds of, of solutions. You can change the attacker, you can change the knife. So, because everything in a dream is your reality. We know that we cannot do this in, in this reality, but it opens our decision space. So when somebody is aggressive in this reality, we don't uh, react in our habits, you know. We, when, when somebody is aggressive to me, I now think, oh, how can we change this, really, this situation that we can have, have some fun together? Or at least that I have some fun in this situation. And this, the people feel the openness. And so sometimes many problems get dissolved just because you don't respond with your standard survival technique. And this is what the dream uh, uh, shows us. It, it helps us to open ourselves and recognize our habits and it opens decision space. This is the first step of the lucid uh, dreamer. And of course, like Luigi mentioned already, there are practical applications. As soon as you're a little bit more uh, in your lucid dreaming practice, you can have practical applications of lucid dreaming. You can solve your problems. In lucid dreaming, I know a, a software engineer, when he cannot solve a problem during the day, he goes into his dream office and hands the problem to his employees and he gets the bag fin uh, finished. Or I even know a guy who, who practices English conversation in his dreams and he says, I don't know how it works. The other guy always speaks better English than me, but uh, this is how I uh, uh, train my English. 
and at on a university in Germany they train the figure skaters who uh, skate on ice you know and then who does these complicated jumps uh, they train them in lucid dreaming and they perform these very complicated uh, jumps in in the in their dreams and it has a significant uh, effect on their coordination during waking state so there are all kinds of applications of lucid dreaming too while you uh, when you have played enough and you found your applications there are also some uh, some other ways to proceed in in lucid dreaming uh, this is something uh, you can we can also talk again at the end of the seminar but uh, also lucid dreaming and meditation is very related so we can meditate during a lucid dream and so we can also develop a night practice if you are interested in that and if you want it these are the uh, our main goals yep. during during this seminar and yeah i'm looking forward to the seminar i think we will have some fun together <laughs>